Good morning. I'm Megan Gallagher. I'm the Vice President of the Board of Trustees. Uh, welcome to our Monta Vista Unitarian Universalist Congregation Sanctuary on this beautiful Fall Sunday. We are here together this morning to celebrate our Unitarian Universalist values of justice, equity, generosity, interdependence, transformation, and pluralism, all centered around love. Let us put those values into action every day in any way we can. Now, announcements. Please read your community connections sent every Thursday to your inbox. Taco Tuesday, next Tuesday, and uh, seven o'clock online. The Wednesday, we have an administrative team meeting. It says 5.30, but it is actually at five. Uh, and that will be both on site and online. Spiritual life team on Wednesday the 13th at seven. And it says on site and online. Is that accurate? I'll be here for both meetings. Okay, okay. Um, we have a board of trustees meeting. They are open. Uh, we do have a Zoom link. If you'd like to Zoom in, just let us know. We'll make sure you get the link. Um, it is Tuesday, November 19th at 1030, both on site and online. Thanksgiving. We will not be having our annual community dinner here, but encourage folks to open their homes to congregants to join them for Thanksgiving. If you would like to be invited, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. If you um, have an opening at your table, please invite someone to share your meal. If you know of congregants who need a meal delivery for the day, please see me or Debbie Skirdo. Uh, we are adopting two families this year for um, our Christmas giving tree. Each family has six kids. Yeah, so uh, more on that in the Community Connections on Thursday. Um, our new fundraising group is about to launch, and we invite anyone interested to join this group. Uh, there's a sign up in the back. And we will be scheduling some community work days to clean our shed, work on our vacant land, and sweep up pine needles. So look for those days um, when you can get down and dirty with your fellow congregants. <laughs> Um, all our teams are underway. Look for updates from those groups in the Community Connections. And now our minister, Reverend Maggie Yanoki. Hello, dear ones. It is good, 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 good to be together. Um, ever since Tuesday, actually it was, for me it was Wednesday morning, I've been a little anxious about how and what and how many tissues I need to have up my sleeve. But here we are, here we are. Let us make this a beautiful day of support and love for one another. Um, there is something, a change that is coming to the congregation probably sooner than we'd hope you guys want to start coming up. Um, Ellen and Letha are coming up here to tell their part of the story. We were going to wait for joys and sorrows, but they're going to be teaching the little ones down in our RE at that time. So I said, well, come up. Come up sooner so they can... <laughs> share with everybody what the future holds for them. <laughs> um, when things manifest, you just have to do the mundane to make them go. Uh, last Monday, we bought a house in Taylorville, Utah. Tuesday, I sold my house in Diamond Bar, where I've been for 37 years. <laughs> we spent the rest of this week packing. 
and going through storage. And it's beginning to sink in that we won't be here. And I've been here oh, since about 2003 and prior to that for a little bit. So it's emotional. Your turn. <laughs> Part of the reason we're moving to Taylorsville, Utah, is it's just two blocks north of West Jordan, Utah, where my daughter and two granddaughters and son-in-law live. And they have been wanting us close for a while, and we've looked at it, nothing worked out. And like Alan said, this fell into place this couple weeks. We're excited to go, to be with my daughter and family were sad to leave. And during this week, you know, at first I don't feel I'm that involved. And then I ask, I'm going, oh, what about this? What about this? And then I realize we're ingrained. <laughs> <laughs> and our leaving isn't that we're leaving you, we're not dumping you. You know, our hearts are here. Our hearts will stay here. And I've offered some things with the board that'll get discussed. But we know we can't do everything. And we'll, our hope, our desire is that others can step up and fill some of those voids for us. It would be greatly appreciated. And obviously, the joy comes with sorrow and there will be tears. <laughs> I, and I know it's not one way, but I, I, we appreciate that um, you understand why we're doing this. That's it. And I've decided we're going on our mission, and our mission is to turn Utah blue. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Let's turn it rainbow. Yeah. And just, just because I'm always like, when something happens like this, it's a beautiful thing for them. We're so happy for them. And then our heart just like hurts. It's like, okay, where's my chalice? I need to light a chalice for this. So in honor of your upcoming move, which is gonna come way too fast, um, I'm gonna light this extra chalice today. But we have a special chalice lighting planned as well in a couple minutes. I think today was already going to be hard enough, but you helped the tears flow, so yeah. It's our tradition to open our service with the sounding of the bull. We ring it three times for yesterday. We call to our ancestors and we honor the founding members of this congregation. For today, for all of us who can hold, care, and grow this beloved community that we know is our own, and how we can serve one another and serve the world together. And for tomorrow, may we always offer warm welcome to all who will come across that threshold and find that MVUUC is their spiritual home. Yes, may it be so.
Our time together in worship walks with us as we follow the paths of our lives during the week. As a symbol of that connection, we light our chalice with a flame that becomes for us an image for the warmth of community at the heart of our spiritual home. I have invited John Fisher to light our chalice today because it comes, it's part of a continuous celebration. Uh, Jarius, if you could put that image up on the screen for everybody. This picture was taken on Friday, Friday afternoon. Didn't I give it to you? It's right here. It's clean. <laughs> that is the chapel at the VA hospital at Loma Linda, where John was a patient for many, many months, much longer than he had hoped. But here he is recovered and back with us. But part of the work that John did for our faith while he was there as a patient is to see that the chapel had an image of a chalice. Yeah. So there it is. That's the image. Yeah. So thank you so much, John. It was an honor to be there for that um, dedication. And um, I'll put that picture in our community connect connections this week. But everybody, be sure to thank and congratulate John. And, oh, yeah, it was a beautiful honor. Now let's listen to our chalice lighting words. They are inspired by Tracy Bleakney. This chalice burns with twin flames. The first flame burns for those who seek and defend the right to a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, so that each person may live according to conscience in a democratically elected society. The second flame burns for those defenders of freedom to live in every way that search leads one to live. Working against those who would impose their own beliefs on others through intimidation or legislation with freedom from and for religion. May we tend this fire always, ever vigilant and courageous in our living for freedom and justice, not only for ourselves, but for all. I invite you to stand and join me as we sing our invocations, our anthem, Spirit of Life, the first time through in English, the second in Spanish, and then we'll recite our covenant together. words to our covenant will be on the screen. They're also in your order of service. We affirm that love is the greatest purpose of this congregation. The search for truth is our constant star, and service is our prayer. 
we pledge our hearts, minds, and hands to challenge injustice with courage, to make choices for a healthier planet, and to live out our Unitarian Universalist values every day as beloved community. Thus do we covenant with each other and with all that is sacred in life. Please be seated. It's time for our wisdom tale, a time for all ages. Good morning, everybody. Today's wisdom tale is The Shattering of the Vessels. It's by Amy Patrice Shaw, and it's a retelling of the creation story from the Kabbalah. At the beginning of time, before anything else at all existed, love was all there was, and it filled up everything in the whole universe. But love got bored and lonely. There was no one to be in love with. So one day, love decided to make a world. First, it took a deep breath. Can you take a deep breath with me? How deep can we get? Deeper? OK, <laughs> let it out. Love got all squished up, taking the deepest breath ever. and was so squished that it squeezed out darkness. The darkness was all around, thick and shiny and black. It was beautiful, but now love couldn't see anything. Love wanted, I'm sorry, love waved its arms and legs around, but the darkness was everywhere. I have to do something about this, said love. It thought for a moment and tried to think of the most wonderful, beautiful, warm thoughts ever. Love thought harder and harder, and all of a sudden, love called out, I want light. And pop, all of the warm and wonderful and beautiful thoughts exploded outward in 10 different directions and shaped themselves into 10 big glowing glass balls. Each ball was filled with a spinning lump of pure light and warmth. Some of the spare good thoughts that couldn't quite fit in the glass became dust and water vapor and seeds and molecules that could form animals. And Lo said, this is amazing. I better make something for the light to shine on. So it waved its arms and kicked its legs and all of the dust and water and vapor and molecules that had been scattered around when the glass balls formed began to form into another huge ball. This one of dirt and water and plants and animals, love called this earth. Then uh, the 10 balls of light started toward the earth. And if they made it here in one piece, the entire planet would have been exactly the way love wanted it. But the glass balls were too fragile to contain such strong, powerful, good thoughts. They broke open and shattered and all the good thoughts shattered and flew out like sparks and were scattered like sand, like seeds, like stars. Those sparks fell everywhere on the earth in tiny bits instead of big clumps like love intended. Oh no, said love. I'm too big. I'll never be able to find all those tiny sparks. I have to make one more thing. So love waved its arms and kicked its feet one more time and people appeared on the earth. They didn't know it, but they were created with one job. Find the sparks, these tiny pieces of wonderful goodness and to bring them together again in big clumps. When enough clumps are there, I will recreate the big glass containers to hold them, and this time I will set them down a little more carefully, Love said. So all of us, from the time we were born, have a job, and that job is to help find love and more good and warm and wonderful things. If we do that, we are fixing the world. Yeah. And now, if you guys can, uh, if the kids can come up and get the challenge, you guys can sing us out. Shatter all those vessels while you're there. Spread the love. <clears throat> we have a special recording that was made for us by uh, Reverend Dr. Sophia Betancourt. She is the president of the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations, and it is on our screen. Let's give a listen.
We gather on the morning after in a time of great fear and devastation and very real risk to ourselves and our beloveds. There's so much that we cannot yet know, even if we know the shape and fear the character of our next governmental administration, we cannot fully know what is yet to come in this country. What I do know, beyond any reasonable doubt, is that we are a sanctuary people. We can make that claim from the powerful efforts of our elders in the middle of the 20th century through to our congregations and communities offering shelter to migrants today. Whether Harbor or Pink Haven, our homes, sanctuaries, and even our national headquarters model what it means to offer solidarity, shelter, and asylum in the face of what many of us cannot begin to imagine. These are times that will be defined by the continued and increased need for organizing and a faithful commitment to mutual aid. I want to invite us all back to what we learned in our earliest understandings of what humanity itself means. We draw our purpose from the call to honor and uphold the non-negotiable sacredness of each and every person, of earth and of all beings, bound up together in an abiding love that rests in the call to justice. So many of us are afraid today, fearful for the safety of our loved ones and overwhelmed by the public plans to deny basic human rights. I invite us to feel the reality of that concern and to hold one another in our grieving. I also want us to remember how very many others in our UU communities and across the nation share our values and prepared all the way through this election for what might be asked of us through the remainder of this month and beyond. Look to your community partners. Draw on all that you have learned through UU The Vote and other opportunities to work for electoral justice and know that you are never alone. Your UUA will be with you this day and for all the days to come. We have been planning for this possibility and are here to offer best practices for safety, theology, spiritual practice, and communal care. We will rest in the strength of our covenants and bring that love, generosity, sacred witness, and values-driven interdependence to bear as we work toward a future where our liberation is collective and all of our people count themselves whole. I love you. Let us keep working toward all that we hold most holy together. Amen. Ashe. And blessed be. We will also share a link to that message in our community connections this week. <clears throat> I thank you. Thank you in, in many deep ways for your many kind and generous gifts that maintain our community's physical and spiritual well-being. We are all givers in so many aspects of our church life together. All that we do in our care for one another is an offering toward a wholeness. Here at the Monta Vista Universalist, Unitarian Universalist Congregation, we have agreed to donate 50% of all the offerings we gather that are not earmarked as pledges with a charity that aligns with our values and serves those in the Montclair area. Each recipient is pre-selected by the justice team and approved by the board. For the month of November, we share the plate to support the good work of the 111 Hope Foundation. It's a 501c3 that was founded by our own Caitlin and Emmanuel Salgado. Neither of them could be here. Caitlin's recovering from a surgery. If you're online, Caitlin, bless you. I, I have her words here. 
First and foremost, she writes, thank you. Your generous support from our last Share the Plate campaign made a powerful impact on our work at 111 Hope Foundation. With your help, we were able to serve 120 meals to the unhoused and homeless community members. We purchased 100 backpacks, each filled with essential school supplies like pencils and notebooks for our back to school giveaway and we were able to provide transportation for pallets of donated food, which served countless families in need. At 111 Hope Foundation, we are deeply committed to two central missions, homeless research and our Boost the Youth program. We believe that everyone deserves the support they need to thrive, and we're working to extend that support to the most vulnerable in our community. Through Boost the Youth, we serve children from all backgrounds, providing them with essentials like hygiene items, mentorship, school supplies, and opportunities to grow and feel confident in themselves. We understand that children are the future, and we take every chance to uplift them and inspire them to see their own potential. As the holidays approach, we're gearing up for our annual holiday festival on December 8th where our goal is to bring joy to 285 children that are already registered in our system. Our dream is to provide a toy to each child, and if our budget allows to extend that joy to even more families with toys and other holiday items. We truly could not do any of this without your kindness and your support. Being chosen by MVUUC for the Share the Plate program is an incredible honor and we are forever grateful. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for your generosity and partnership in this mission. Together, we're making a real difference. So thank you. And on behalf of 111 Hope Foundation and this everyone here in this sanctuary, I invite those who are here to please come forward with your generous offerings and have them on the altar. Thank you. Thanks, Lily. That was so perfect. Yeah. yeah. We have quite a mix of both joys and sorrows. And, and like Alan and Letha's announcement, you know, we're just there's so much joy for them. Their life will be opening up towards seeing their grandkids, their granddaughters all the time. But here we are with a big hole. So there's a mix. There's such a mix. Um, normally, on the early Sundays of the month, we do sing a happy birthday to the November babies as part of our opening, but I had forgotten to put that in my script. So, And we have other important <coughs> things to talk about, <coughs> but I don't want to miss out on that. I think that's part of our joy and our sorrow. Let's finish with that before we do our meditation together. Um, but first I have um, a note from Lynn Shabel. She has two, um, two heavy things here that she asks us to, to hold with her. One is that her beloved uncle, who turned 99 on October 31st, beautiful, he is out of the hospital and home and he's on hospice now. He is the last of that generation. Wow, beautiful. And her, um, I had heard about Remy. I'm really sorry that this was the outcome. But her beloved grand dog, Remy, was put to sleep last week after being poisoned with rat poison from someone outside of their yard. So, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. This morning, there was um, something that happened in Cuba. There was a 6.8 earthquake. It's a pretty good one. Yeah. Um, so we hold the people in Cuba in our hearts and, and pray that they will recover from this. 
And our neighbors to the north, near Ventura and Santa Paula, are still recovering from a fire, a mountain fire that's still burning. But 132 homes were destroyed and 88 others were, were damaged. Uh, we have friends, we have our congregation in both Ventura and Santa Paula, where members of their both congregations are among those who are really struggling after this terrible fire. So we hold all of those things. And you know what? I don't feel like singing happy birthday right now. Does anybody else? Next week. Who wants to sing happy birthday? Raise your hand. Or who wants to wait? I didn't see any hands go up. We'll put a little corner choir up together later to sing happy birthday, but I'll make sure we do it next week. I just, yeah. Our meditation and prayer time, um, we're going to just do some shared silence because I feel the mix of emotion in the room. And for those who are joining us online, um, I have some poetry coming up during the reading that will also serve as a prayer. But for now, let's, let's just sit, change how we're sitting, put our feet flat on the floor so that we can feel rooted in Mother Earth that loves us all so much that our arms, our hands just rest comfortably either on our lap or... And let's just notice our breath. Rather than trying to control it, let's just notice that we are being held. We're held by gravity. We are held by being breathed. That force that is breathing us and keeping us going and keeping us here at this time with purpose and passion. And we share the next few moments in silent meditation. And as we take a deep breath together, a little deeper, like we did in our story time, let our sigh be audible. Ah! Go ahead. Ah! Yeah. And we're going to sing together. We're going to sing to each other, we're going to sing to ourselves, and we're going to sing to the world. It's number 1053, it's in our teal hymnal. I invite the choir to sing out loud. It's a good question. Can remain seated as we sing, how could anyone? Our reading today comes from the work of two poets that I often use in my services may be familiar with the names of Chilon Harkin and John Rodell. But they wrote some extra poetry this week, and it was just so helpful. So let's just let it, let it be our medicine. It starts with Chilon Harkin. When the earth shakes and foundations crumble, that our light is called to rise up. It's when everything else falls away and shakes us to the core and awakens all of our hidden ghosts that we dig deeper to find once inaccessible strength. And it is in times when division is fierce that we must reach for each other 
and hold each other much, much tighter. So do not fall away now. This is the time to rise. Your light is being summoned. Your integrity is being tested that it may stand more tall. When everything collapses, we must find within us that which is indomitable. Rise and find the strength in your heart. Rise and find the strength in each other and burn through your devastation and make that your fuel. Bring forth your light. Now is not the time to be afraid of the dark. And John Rodell says, if you can still cry, it means you can still breathe. And if you can still breathe, it means you are still alive. And if you are still alive, it means you still have work to do. So go ahead and cry for a bit. Each tear is proof of your survival and each jagged breath you take is evidence of your courage. You may be wounded, you may be discounted, but you're still here. And some days, simply still being here, despite what the world has done to you, is a miracle. And you are a miracle. You are a miracle. You are a miracle. My love, you are a miracle, so don't hide your streaking tears because they're your badges of salty valor that tell the story of how you kept going despite the raging storm. And we need you. We need you. So go ahead and cry, breathe, survive. Then we'll get back to work. Hello, beloved ones. I wanted to write a letter this week to send out to you, but it turned into my sermon. And as we bring our sore and tender hearts together, I offer condolences and Kleenex. I put off writing this sermon on Wednesday, which is my usual writing day, so that I could sit with my own grief and hear its wisdom beneath the panicked urgency that was already capturing all of my attention. Grief says, take a breath, to feel, cry, curl up in a ball, punch something, and today we offer space for feeling all that we need to feel right now. It's hard to believe that we're here. I had another sermon I wanted to write. But yet how fortunate we are to have this space to be together in a community not only of like-minded but also like-hearted friends and we will take time to be in our hearts together a little bit because that is where most of the pain is centered right now. That's where the medicine is kept. That's where the wisdom that we seek is waiting while the mind just keeps raging and spinning. Not just what ifs, we have experience but it spins like the Tasmanian devil, trying to knock us off our center and telling us that we're not able to do a thing. That's what our minds do in trauma. Sort and plan and solve and resolve, all busy and spinning while the heart just cracks and says, ouch, this is terrible. We lose our footing 
when we hurt and we're tired and we're disoriented. We stumble and we withdraw when we're afraid and we feel lost or alone. And isn't that the hope of those who rise now to protect the patriarchy and the supremacy? That is the hope, that we will be afraid. But we urge you to come close, come close here and bring your friends to this place where it is safe and it is encouraging. Like you, I'm sad, I'm scared, I'm shocked, and several other emotions that come out as F words that feel really good. <laughs> But they make me a very tired soul. The expressions of hate come out looking like Medusa. Yeah. Wanting to rage and turn anyone with a red tie to stone. <laughs> but that adds to the hate rather than calming it. And I'm tired of hating. I'm tired. That tiredness is a warning sign that I've got a big sword in my gut. And if I move too quickly to pull it out, I won't be any good for anyone. Oh, was that a bird? Oh, Catherine will rescue. There she is. I knew it. <laughs> So we heed every, please heed every reminder to rest, to feel the gut wrench of what we did as a nation on Tuesday, and allow the feelings that you have to rise and to be recognized. Honor your Medusa and let her express how you feel. Keep the door open to all of it as we build a bonfire from the wreckage of our wounded hope for all of those plans that cannot play out quite yet. Yet, those bottles of th champagne that we were waiting to uncork and those fists full of confetti that I had ready to throw. But instead, the bonfire of all those things is a watch fire now, calling us home from the war, calling us together to gather and strengthen ourselves, calling us as our passion is stirred up and our mission comes alive again. Like every other minister of a liberal religious community writing today's sermon was probably among the top 10 challenges any of us have faced in our careers. So how do I offer courage to my beloved congregation when referring to a political figure or naming the enemy is really problematic. So how do I avoid political references when the sword in our guts was put there by the deception of specific persons? How do I care for your spiritual lives without condemning the politics that is harming everyone, especially those who are surrendering to it? We do it by rising above all the politics and every drip of vitriol of political shaming. And instead, we choose to keep returning to the love it is at the center of our faith as we act not as politicians, but as humanitarians to preserve the dignity of all life. Oh, don't we just ache for that to be so. It seems we were so close to crossing a threshold, and maybe we were. It sure felt like we were. I was trusting everything I felt. So maybe we are. Maybe we still are close to that threshold. But there's more we are to do and learn and birth. And as your minister, I am your midwife. 
coaching you toward the birthing of all that we're hoping for beyond what we can imagine, but yet we're not there yet. And oh yeah, there's that sword in our guts. I am so very sorry that I need to encourage you to wait a little bit longer for a better world. I so wish this had not happened now, especially while we're moving closer to my time of leaving you. My vision was to have had a full year under the leadership of our first woman president empowering us before I left. More F words. But let's remember all of those things that are not coming to be, that all need to go on the watch fire. I can hear Tolkien's conversation between Frodo and Gandalf in the Fellowship of the Ring. I wish it needn't have happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf, and so do all who live to see such times, but it is not for us to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. So what do we decide to do next? For now, we seek the guidance of the bards. Poet Kayleen Asbo wrote this advice for us this week. It's titled, What to Do Next. Lie down in the grass and feel the sun on your face. At night, gaze at the stars, pick up your pen, your paintbrush, your instrument, <laughs> weep, wail, sing. Find the kindest poems you can lay your hands on and repeat them over and over and wrap them around your aching heart like a soft blanket and rock yourself like you would a baby. Bury your bare feet in green grass or soft sand and remind yourself you still belong here. No matter how bleak today, today may seem, reach out to one person who is more scared or one who is suffering more than you are. Send a love note. Make a mandala. Bake cookies. Be extravagant with praise. And remember that the sorrow is vast, but don't let it devour you. As the darkness grows, may each of us become a candle of great light. May that be so. And may it be so because we know that our faith already is a candle of great light. We're not starting from nowhere. We know that Unitarian Universalism can be a shelter for those who need a place to heal or for anyone who is seeking liberal religious community. And I'm confident that we can welcome anyone who is screaming for freedom from religion in these tender times. We know what this faith has done for ourselves, and it still does for us. But we may need reminding that this faith is not ours. It is everyone's, especially now. And as a Great Lakes girl, I know the importance of having a rope to hold on to in the storms that come. Oswego State the SUNY school where my son Nick is an adjunct professor, puts up ropes near the snow-covered paths so that the students can hold on in the 50 mile an hour winds that blow off Lake Ontario in blinding snowstorms. So from where we are now, it might just be time to put the ropes up. Those ropes are lifesavers for everyone in ways that are not just metaphorical. In the introduction of Parker Palmer's book, A Hidden Wholeness, he tells a story that begins like this. There was a time when farmers on the Great Plains at the first sign of a blizzard would run a rope from the back door out to the barn. 
They all knew stories of people who had wandered off and been frozen to death, having lost sight of home in a whiteout while still in their own backyards. So life ropes are a good metaphor for how our faith can be a way to reach out to those who feel they're lost and out to sea and caught in a blizzard or alone and scared and depressed at home. We can be that safe place for them that they're crying out for. We need to be here. We need to be well and we need to be here for anyone who has a change of heart after realizing that their way of living in the realms of bad theology and separation mindset and white supremacy isn't what they want anymore. It does happen. And hopefully, it will happen more and more in the years ahead. But we need to be here to welcome them too and to teach them and give them a place where it's okay We can be there to tend that watch fire and welcome home those who are the walking wounded. We don't have any secret special knowledge that is only for us. We found it because we called out for it to come and heal us. We were searching like others are now. We found it because we're called to heal with it. And we know how to keep love at the center so that we can hold that center in, as this world comes undone. And we have a new task now that we hoped was coming. We have it. Wait a minute. What did I write? <laughs> See ya. My brain is mush. We have to reset, we have to reboot. We have to reset our screens. We have to push control, alt, delete. That's not an Apple command, but it's one everyone knows. We need to reboot everything. But let's see what comes up on our screen when we do that. Let's reboot and reimagine ourselves as part of a force for love that is powerful healing and beyond any one belief. It's a long overdue shift that is still coming. A world that will be stronger than anything that patriarchy alone has caused. It will be inclusive and unconditional and universal. So let's reboot our screens, our vision, what we see before us see how important it is that we look with love and not judgment to bring curiosity for what is in the future and not fear of it or shrinking from it because we have no idea what is going to happen. No one does. So let's not co-create mayhem, but stand together here against it. It's people who are grounded in their faith. People who want to lock arms with one another and keep this community here as a watch fire. So let's reboot what we have on our screens and the certainty of doom that tricks our minds. Let's do what we can to hold love at the center so we can instead serve the world as it is reimagined. We might have to do it several times, but that's okay. We can. Blessed be and amen. Let's go through our day singing this next sending song. I hope it becomes an earworm for you. Come sing a song with me by Carolyn McDade. The words are on the screen. I invite you to stand and sing out.
our unison benediction is one way that we will bless each other. Please read it aloud together. As we close our time together and extinguish our chalice flame, Let's enjoy the postlude. Have a seat. Thank you so much, and thank you to the choir. We really needed you guys here today, and thank you for being here for us. Yeah, yeah. My closing words for you today come from Walter Brueggemann. He writes, like the ancient prophets, we too are ever dispatched to the good work entrusted to us. It is a work of peacemaking, it is the work of truth telling. It is the work of justice doing. It is good work, but it requires our resolve, even in the face of the forces to the contrary, that are sure to prevail for a season. We are in it for the long run, even as the holy is in it for the very long haul, from everlasting to everlasting, and we do not ease off because, just because it is hard. Blessed be.